LSU football landed three on the Bednarik Award watch list, which was released today. The uh, Bednarik goes to the best defensive player in college football. LSU had back-to-back Bednarik Award winners in 2010 and 2011. Of course, Patrick Peterson won it in 2010, became LSU's first Bednarik Award winner. And then a year later, Tyron Matthew won it in the 2011 season. So this year, LSU has three on the Bednarik preseason watch list. They are linebacker Jabril Cox, who's going to wear 19. I can't remember an LSU linebacker wearing 19. I'm not saying it's never happened. I just can't remember. Um, Jacoby Stevens, safety Jacoby Stevens, and, of course, cornerback Derek Stingley Jr. Those three on the Chuck Bednarik Award watch list for the best defensive player in college football. Stingley's a very obvious one because he was the best cornerback in college football last year. He was a unanimous, I'm sorry, consensus All-American, a unanimous SEC Newcomer of the Year. Jacoby Stevens was really one of LSU's most productive defenders last year. 92 tackles was second only to Jacob Phillips. He added five sacks and three picks, including that really athletic pick against Mississippi State. And then, of course, Jabril Cox, who that's an interesting one to see Jabril Cox on the list. I'm not saying he's not worthy. I mean, he's a two-time FCS All-American, and many assumed he would have been a top 60 pick in the draft had he come out this past year, but wanted a chance to play at the major college level before he jumped to the NFL. He's a guy who in three seasons had 258 tackles. His teams went 45-1 and one during his three seasons there in the FCS at North Dakota State. Last year alone, 92 tackles, 9.5 for loss, 5.5 sacks. Dude's a monster. So I don't doubt at all that Jabril Cox will statistically have enough punch to be in the conversation for that at the award at the end of the season. But when it comes to national awards, so often you have got to have name recognition to win it. It's very rare that a that a player bursts on the, spe- the scene, splashes, and wins it. Like last year, if we're being honest, Derek Stingley had a better season last year than Grant Delpit. But Delpit was the unanimous All-American in 2018 and should have won it, but DeAndre Baker won it then. So Delpit had the name recognition, wound up winning it last year. Go back to 2010. So many teams threw away from Patrick Peterson in 2010 that his statistics were down from 2009, but everybody knew he was impacting the game because he was taking away half the field, and he won all the awards that year. So it may be a scenario this year where Stingley doesn't have the stats, but he has the name recognition to win the Thorpe, maybe the Bednarik, we'll see. Stingley, Stevens, rather, I think will have a fantastic year. And I, I think he's going to work his way up draft boards and and do a lot of really good things for this defense, playing in the box, kind of in that Delpit role. Playing in the box, rushing the passer, um, dropping back into coverage, covering backs and tight ends. I think he'll be fantastic. Uh, but I also think, like we talked about with name recognition, that's what's missing for Jacoby Stevens. Even though he was a five-star, I don't know that he's the flashy personality that's going to get enough attention. I'm just telling you from a standpoint of someone who has voted for all-conference and all-America-type teams and awards and stuff like that, so often when you get a ballot, it's like if you don't, if you're, if you're not 100% sure and you don't ask anybody, you just defer or default to the name you recognize. Which is why Jabril Cox, I think, is the most interesting one. Because he's a guy that very well could, for the defending champs, have a 100-tackle season and all the stats. Like, his stats could match like what Devin White did in his Butkus season where 130 tackles, all that stuff. Like, I could absolutely see Jabril Cox having that type of season statistically on a contender. You know, but I think the challenge with Jabril Cox is, like, we know Jabril Cox, but does the country know him? And they'll probably get to know him this year. But but I'll, I'll say it to you this way, because some of you may hem and haw at that and go, oh, but he's, he's a two-time FCS All-American. Let me ask you this question, and honestly... Did you know the name Jabril Cox before he signed with LSU? Be real with me. You're sitting in your car, you're at your desk, your office, wherever you are. To honestly, before he signed with LSU, did you know the name Jabril Cox? You know the answer. That's okay. Typically, FCS players, even All-Americans, aren't household names. 
Sometimes that happens around the draft when you'll have guys from FCS schools when Joe Flacco was was at Delaware, you know, and then he goes to the senior bowl and blows up and becomes a first round pick. Like that happens sometimes. Um but we're familiar with him and and his his career so far and what our expectations are for Jabril Cox. I just, I think he's going to fight that battle though. I just think he's going to fight that battle of awareness when it comes to, to some of the national awards this year, unless he just has enormous moments on the big stage. I think whenever I think of that, I always think think to Craig Stelts. You know, Craig Stelts, we forget, even though he was a consensus All American his senior year, Craig Stelts didn't start full time at LSU until his senior year in 2007, and his first game as a full time starter. Thursday night, season opener against Mississippi State in Starkville, and he has three picks in that game. He had six for the year, if I'm not mistaken. Half of his interception total came in the first game. When everyone's clamoring for college football, everyone wanted to see that LSU team. Sylvester Croom was talking about how you, you ever been in a gunfight with a switch? You know, well, now we got a gun. Like he was ready, State was ready for it, and LSU just smothered State. And Stelts was a huge part of that. And then he had a great senior year, and boom. Consensus All-American, All-SEC, all that stuff. I think Cox may need something like that. And the unfortunate part is you would have thought the opportunity would have been week two against Texas. Like in Baton Rouge, Tiger Stadium, prime time, week two, early in the season, marquee matchup, LSU, Texas, under the lights. And that would have been an awesome opportunity for any of these guys to pop and have just a major impact. The way we think about third and 17, right? Burrow and Jefferson, like, We've replayed that play over and over and over. We didn't know it at the time, but third and 17, in many respects, became Burroughs' Heisman moment. He had it on a huge stage early in the season. And it and that, in many ways, catapulted him and propelled him the rest of the way through the season. So, I mean, he, don't get me wrong. I mean, everything he did last year, everything he touched was gold. But that was our first inclination, like, oh, my God, it's it's on. So, I'll be interested, man. And look, we're in that we're into talking season. And this... This is supposed to be the week that SEC Media Days goes on, and we're not going to have that. But this is the time of year where every day you get a different watch list that comes out. So we'll start to be able to look at the team position by position throughout the course of this week and where we're expecting guys to show out and have great seasons and sort of what the national feel is. And if the Bednarik watch list is any indicator, uh, there's a lot of respect given still nationally to LSU's defense, even though it lost half its defense from a year ago to the NFL. And that includes Cox and Stevens and, of course, Derek Stingley. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.